Welcome back to the shops. This is our super high-tech title card for our instructional video on how to put together 30 series locomotives. Let's move our stand there. <clears throat> uh, basically, this is about how to turn this locomotive into one of these. And this is a Bachman USRA HO 060060. Let me hold it where you can see it. And um, these are actually good mechanisms, really good mechanisms. And you can find a lot of used ones. Of course, it's currently uh, September 2nd, 2024. So some of this information may change, but um, <clears throat> shopping for a lot, I've bought several of these. And if you can find some with the darkened metal, metal wheels where they're not quite so bright, and then there's a bit of darkened metal in the uh, running gear, the side rods. And this eccentric crank is usually on the newer models, which means it has, usually means it has a better motor. And some of these are decent runners. Some of them are really good runners. And of course, this is DCC only. So DC operations is a whole, whole nother animal. <clears throat> and then once you remove the, uh, the body, it's more like that. The only change you really have to make, I try to keep the surgery required on the mechanism to a minimum. The only thing you really need to do is to cut off this front pilot. You see this little pilot attached there, which really doesn't leave room. It's, it's too small for O and 30, and it's um, too close for any kind of wheel set, at least a larger wheel set. So you just slice that off. Uh, you know what? Also remove the smoke unit if it's got one, and I also remove the uh, headlight, which usually fits right in there. Otherwise, it's a it's a nice mechanism. With you know, don't have to grind any metal. I hate grinding metal. And so this is <clears throat> these are the basic parts for find a place for that number thirty, and number thirty is a. It can be built as a 262 or an 060 or an 062 or a 260. Um, lots of options there. Um, and this number 30, obviously, this is just these are just the basic parts. You would need a smokestack and headlight and all that stuff. This one's built as a 262. <clears throat> 30 has a round tank and a wooden cab. 31 has a has side tanks and a metal cab and number 32 has a square tank and a metal cab but they're all the same uh, basic dimensions and the 30s 30 31 and 32 are shorter this one's built as a 262 which gives it a little bit more length and um, the thing about the 30 31 and 32 is that let's take the roof off <clears throat> To make room for the motor uh, and the weights in, inside, gosh, it's hard to see that. I had to continue the back head all the way back to the back of the cab. So if you were to open the doors, you would it'd be really obvious. Let's take it apart. It's just solid, and there's not room for um, kind of a space between the back head and the back of the cab where you would shovel in coal or wood or whatever. So these are, I, I wanted to see if it would work and they turned out pretty good, but the doors are actually molded in place on these because they are, um, you just don't want to give away the illusion that the, that space in there is, is filled and, and it's not accessible. It looks a little bit odd and there's no backhead detail on these at all. That's, that's just built into the cab itself. This is all, this is all one piece. <clears throat> but what I wanted to show you with this one, and I probably shouldn't have taken it apart. Let's put it back together again. There are tabs that, caught, that allow these to fit together. We'll slide that in to, and then boom, there we go. <clears throat> the, question, the thing I had to solve, the front end holds itself in because it slides, the actual mechanism slides into the space behind the smoke box. But I had to find a way to cause this thing to hold itself together. And so what I came up with, I, I did work with, um, there is a bit of, the, there's a 
deal inside there where you can use a screw, but that got to be really problematic. What I came up with was a way of using these side tanks underneath the, um, underneath the cab. And these actually slide into the slots there <clears throat> and, and they protrude enough to hold the underframe in place. So these side tanks, there are two of them. I've just put one in, but these are designed to hold the cab onto the mechanism. And then you could drop a piece of a little bit of white glue or something, just something just, just to keep it in, in uh, where it is. And you can also pull it out if you need to. I always like to be able to take things apart without much trouble. And, um, oh, let me show you another part that I came up with. I don't usually include this, but I really like it. This is a uh, back pilot that works with um, 30, 31, and 32. If you're using a, um, a road pilot, I need to clean up the... Uh, bits inside there, but it gives you a back pilot similar to the uh, front pilot. Let's talk pilots for a minute. That's I, I did show you how to mount the um, mechanism there. Now I've got the... There it goes. That's how you attach it, though. <clears throat> that makes it easier than, you know, messing with screws and all that kind of stuff. There. Let's see if we can see it. There is a place you can take a screw through the hole in the mechanism right here up into this slot here. What would that be called? It's just that resin doesn't work well with screws. It tends to break and crack um, more so than ABS plastic. So I just figured that would not be the best solution. I had this so the tanks work better as a solution. But um, there are three kinds of pilots for these locomotives. This is a um, 262 road pilot, so it's got a pointed cow catcher pilot. I don't know. It's It's got a pointy bit here. <clears throat> and then there's also a switching version of this. And there's also well, that was weird. <clears throat> there's the theme song again. And then this is a short pilot for 060s. And it just once you slice off the um, existing pilot, it just slides in. And then there are pins that hold it in place. And they usually, I find I usually have to in, insert them from the, the underside here. And um, you might have to clean out some stuff. For, you know, and actually, something metal would be better in, in a lot of ways. But those, that's what these are for. These, these pins, which usually aren't purple... Those, I thought that would make it more visible. And then that's the pilot. Um, the, this is what it looks like <clears throat> where this element, this piece that's holding the uh, front wheels, the front, front pilot, I guess this would be a truck, in place. And there are little holes going all the way through different sizes. I'll take some brass stock or, or wire, uh, music wire, and glue into these holes to hold the wheel set in place. And this is usually a, like a KD number uh, or 36 inch HO wheel set, or if you can find one that has a metal uh, metal axle in the middle, that gives it a bit more weight and causes it to track better. So those are the 30s and the 31s. Stick it in its box there. <clears throat> Let me show you something new. This is, um, this is a number 33. It's a little bit dusty. And um, this is the same, but it's a little, it's the same as a 30, but it's a little bit longer. And the cab, instead of being closed, is open. Let's see on this one. I didn't do this at first because I couldn't make a um, back head, but that actually is a uh, moderately detailed back head. Someday when I get really bored, maybe I'll actually um, build. <clears throat> more detailed, like fully tricked out back heads ready to go. But right now we can do these. This is for a different locomotive, but you can do a, a Johnson bar and a throttle and some basic um, dials and stuff. And this, I don't know, but we'll see how far we can push the technology to do more. But these locomotives I actually saw a, an image, a photo, an old photograph of a 060 locomotive. So I left off the, I made it a short 
a short pilot, and then I put a trailing truck on it. And of course, a locomotive like this needs a tender. Where did I put my tender? Oh, there we go. So that's one of our 12-foot uh, tenders. I like that locomotive. That's pretty cool. So this is a number 33. I'm just now releasing, the, or they'll be hitting the Etsy site in the next week or two. And there's a 33. Oh, you know what? Let me show you the uh, castings. Not castings, the prints. <clears throat> so that's a 33. It's got a round tank. And um, you could put the uh, air pump up here on, beside the smoke box. And then a, a wood cab and a, and a metal roof. And it's pretty open. And then the other version, the 34, is the same geometry, geometry, but it's a uh, side tank. If, you know, once you figure out the, the how things work, just keep making stuff. And it's a metal cab with, with rivets as opposed to the wood cab. So same thing, two different versions, and they both could use tenders, and they work well with the 12-foot tenders that we have. We got a, a bunch of those. You know what? I should show you how <clears throat> how the well. That's not going to work because that's not uh, oh, that's not opened up. Let's just do let's do this next, and then just so we cover all the 30 series. These have been out for a while, but um, they're still good. This is well. I've got too many trains. I think this is. All right, this is a 36. <clears throat> I'm going out of order. There's a little pin in there that helps you mount. Okay, this is a 36. It's got a closed panel on the cab, kind of like a southern style locomotive. And um, one sand dome, big steam dome. All of the um, piping and the uh, air pump are already installed. And I mean, that's, that's one piece. So there's, I just, I, I really dislike that whole process of bending the metal and trying to get it to fit in there. And uh, it just drives me nuts. It was easier for me to uh, just print it. And then where is our, nope, that's the wrong one. I'm really organized. Anyway, that's the 36. The 35, I thought I had one around here. What did I do? 35 is similar, but the cab has an open panel here. And instead of one sand dome, it's got a sand dome here and a sand dome here. And the steam dome is in the middle. And I need to show you, this is something that we've had questions about. <clears throat> so I'm going to hope this works. This is a fresh print, so it's a little bit, sometimes you'll need to um, sand the inside of the print a bit to get things to fit effectively, like I'm doing now. This one is not quite there yet. I need to come in and sand a bit. Yep, right there, right there. <clears throat> but the um, once it's in place, where did my parts go? There we go. <clears throat> These slots right here are designed this, the same way as the tanks are. These are little mini tanks just so they don't look so obvious and they fit like that and so where it protrudes right there it holds the body it holds the mechanism in place let's see how does this one fit okay you can see the little recess there it goes like that so I usually use a drop of um, Woodland Scenics glue or some kind of matte medium to um, hold the part in place where I can still pull it out fairly easily. You don't have to super glue these in to make them work. They don't need a lot. They're, they're pretty tight. I hate using super glue when I want to take something apart because I do that a lot. And so that's the 36. The 35 is pretty much the same. Same geometry, but just different, different domes. So hopefully that answers the questions. I really like these. And um, if you have any further questions, let me know. And we will talk to you guys later.